that they are doing exactly that. And honestly, I wouldn't have backed off. I would have stayed in that dragon pit and I would have went after whoever decided to TP in. Nautilus is going down, but it's going very slowly. <laughs> uh, looks like, oh, well, Zaya actually has Blade of the Ruin King, so she can actually start to uh, uh, kind of fight off the Nautilus, but it looks like she's also going to need to buy Lord Dominic's regards. Uh, that will that will help actually take down Nautilus fast enough so that he's not able to hold down the front line or the back line long enough to uh, let the... Essentially, it gets him out of the way so everyone can actually move in and go after the more important targets. Absolutely. It seems that a lot of Zaya builds right now are trending towards very, very heavy, lots of attack damage in the build and getting a lot of damage. So when her passive kicks in with the piercing auto attacks, it's able to land lots of damage through everyone in the entire team, rather than prioritizing things more along the lines of attack speed and trying to get more attacks. Because the feathers are such an important part of Zaya's kit, it seems that a lot of the builds focus around maximizing the damage the feathers do when they're thrown through and pulled back through entire teams. Right. Say so. Actual armor pen versus lethality is going to be kind of useful. I'm looking forward to seeing her build something like that, hopefully. Um, although it looks like she might be going Black Cleaver? Or that she might be going Essence Reaper. I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, we'll have to see what her next item is going to be. But otherwise, Caitlyn looks like she's going to either be building a uh, Bloodthirster or potentially a Infinity Edge. I would assume she's going to build an Infinity Edge because typically that's your best move moving forward. The headshot combined it with the crit strike combined with the extra damage associated with the crit strike. Those tend to be pretty pretty helpful, <laughs> to say the least, in the team fight situation. And it looks like Zaya is going in, but Graves came too. She flashes out. Kled is right behind Graves, and he flashes over the wall and is able to pick her off while avoiding the Kled coming through and finishing him off as well. But it looks like Blue is going ahead and invading the top side of Custom Elite's map. Lux goes ahead and throws a poking E out and she goes and everyone else goes ahead and backs out towards the red turret. I'm going to say Lux is unable to really do too much. She tries to kill off the minion line, but it's not enough. Amumu goes ahead, goes in, tries to stop Ari, but the bubble from Nami goes ahead and makes things impossible for either of those guys, Rakan or Amumu, to do anything. They both go down. Lux then goes down from the Ari queue, and it looks like they're going to be making a push towards the top tower for their first uh, inhib of this game, and it looks like they're going to try and crack the base. Yeah, breaking the turtle that this base is surrounded by walls and damaging turrets is such an important part of this game. And with that incredibly potent team fight that went down for the blue side, they are just able to have so many advantages going in. A flash burned and a mist charm by Ari does give a little pressure back to the red side. But at the same time, that last fight cost them so much. Their support and their jungler, both who do not have damage, engaged into the heart of the enemy team on their own. They were easily taken down, despite how Amumu does have decent durability. The Rakan also just fell so quickly, and all of the CC and potency and strength that they have to lock up the enemy team was lost because they made the decision to engage when other people weren't around. Oh, and that Graves all completely whiffed. Or say Mumu moving in the fog of war and being able to get out of that safely. Um, yeah, so at this point, I think blue team should probably work towards trying to pick off one person and then from there going to get Baron. Uh, doesn't matter who they necessarily pick off. Just picking off anyone would theoretically make it impossible in my mind for the red team to actually be able to come through and fight. Pretty so. much the ideal picks, I would say, are Zaya because she has the most damage on the red team, as well as Amumu because he does have the small potential to manage that smite steal and turn the fight around in their favor. Now, what I would say, though, is that overall, the Lux due to the very, very powerful plays early and the 
gang or and the Graves uh, ganks as well, giving Ari the advantage. Lux is in not a very good position right now. As you can see by the Nautilus's build, she is hurting him so little, he does not even need to create defensive stats in order to defend against the magic damage, meaning he has so much armor, he can soak up the damage this Baron is throwing out for very little. And it looks like we might have a problem here, And but it looks like Blue Team still manages to get that Baron. Uh, Final Light goes ahead and takes that Baron, and now they're on the pursuit of uh, Custom Elite. Custom Elite is running for their lives. They have luckily have a Kled ult to go ahead and get them out of there, along with Lux uh, Ease to slow them down on their way there. Uh, it looks like this is not good because Super Minions pushed into the uh, Custom Elite's base. They take down one of the Nexus turrets, and now it's just Lux out here by herself trying to defend mid, and she goes down. It looks like... Uh, looks like Final Light Gaming is finally going to go ahead and get the second in hit, and at the same time, with the Baron Empowered Minions, I believe that they, this might be the winning push here. I'm going to say... It was, yeah, with, with only four members up and everyone on uh, Final Light Gaming doing so well and having so much health remaining, with no defenses left, they are able to push with their Baron minions and even just go for kills there so far ahead and have such an advantage. They don't have to worry about the enemy team or finishing off the game before they can uh, get killed because the enemy team is just so far behind that even with the regenerative effects of their own base. Things are still looking very, very, very exactly. scary. Well, I said that was a great game we just had here. Uh, Absolutely. Looks like Final Light Gaming has. Hold on. Looks like Final Light Gaming has gone ahead and taken this first win. Um, they go ahead and win 23 to seven, 23 kills to seven kills. They went ahead and actually almost had a 20k gold advantage by the end of the game. Yeah. So that's that's pretty scary by itself. Uh, <laughs> But uh, that was a completely crazy outcome. Sorry, we're trying to switch some stuff around and get the camera focused on us, but it seems to be having some problems and not actually showing up. Uh, so essentially you're gonna just be staring at the victory screen for a bit while we talk about this game and work out some of these technical issues. But um, overall, uh, it very much seems that the end result of this game came down to the junglers. It was an Amumu jungle who is very, very strong at team fighting, and a Graves jungle whose early game pressure and consistent damage is exceedingly potent, especially during the early bits of laning phase. Graves took full advantage of this early pressure that he had and made it so all of his lanes were winning significantly. Graves impacted top and mid, changing those drastically in the favor of his team, while bot lane, with its aggressive poke, quickly pushed out the enemy team of Zaya and Rakan. Even with their amazing synergy, they were not able to keep up with the rapid attack and the massive amounts of damage that were coming out from Caitlyn and Nami. Right, and if you look at the KDA of the two junglers, you can tell who... It's, it's so painfully obvious to see who actually had the... Biggest impact. Graves went 13, 1, and 8. Absolutely. Amumu went 1, 5, and 2. Those are the things that you got to be aware of, and those are the things you got to pay attention to uh, when you are uh, trying to decide whether or not you want to have that fight mid and late game. Like, wh who who's really the true force behind their team? Uh, I think that if Custom Elite had actually taken advantage of that and maybe noticed that Graves was completely a problem. Uh, they might have been able to take him down, and if that, they had taken him down, there's a chance that they pretty much would have been able to make a comeback, I think. But, unfortunately, that's not what happened. And we have our next game. Uh, we're going to be moving on to game two, where uh, Custom Elite will be down one game against Final Light Gaming, and we will go ahead and take a small break uh, not very long in fact don't really go too long or don't don't really go anywhere because we will be right back we pretty will much. be right back and uh, 
If correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a best of three. Am yes, I it is. It's a best of three. That means that Custom Elite definitely has an opportunity to get back in this game. After that recent game, that has to be very, very rough on the nerves. And what is coming up is so important because it's all about keeping those nerves under control, going back to what you're comfortable with, making sure you yeah. pick to your strengths, and then playing that without letting the previous game's problems impact you. Right. It's a new game. The only way it can hurt you is if you lose the next one. Right. Which, as long as you can shrug off the stress, which is what Crimson Elite really needs to do, you can end up turning incredible defeats into victories. Right. You can pull a reverse sweep. So Absolutely. It's, it's always possible. But, all right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after that. Eight minutes. Or, sorry, <laughs> never mind. my heart. 